Fourth, the patent monopoly, which consists in protecting inventors and authors against competition for a period long enough to enable them to extort from the people a reward enormously in excess of the labor measure of their services. In other words, in giving certain people a right of property for a term of years and laws and facts of nature, and the power to extract tribute from others for the use of this natural wealth, which should be open to all. The abolition of this monopoly would fill its beneficiaries with a wholesome fear of competition, which would cause them to be satisfied with pay for their services equal to that which other laborers get for theirs, and to secure it by placing their products and works on the market at the outset at prices so low that their line of business would be no more tempting to competitors than any other lines. The development of the economic program, which consists of the destruction of these monopolies and the substitution for them of the freest competition, led its authors to a perception of the fact that all their thought rested upon a very fundamental principle, the freedom of the individual, his right of sovereignty over himself, his products and his affairs, and a rebellion against the dictation of external authority. Just as the idea of taking capital away from the individuals and giving it to the governmental start started Marx in a, in a path which ends in the making the government everything and the individual nothing. So the idea of taking capital away from the government-protected monopolies and putting it within easy reach of all individuals started Warren and Perdon in a path which ends in the making the individual everything and the government nothing. If the individual has a right to govern himself, all external government is tyranny, hence the necessity of abolishing the state. This was the logical conclusion to which Warren and Perdon were forced, and it became the fundamental article of their phys political philosophy. It is a doctrine which Perdon named anarchism, a word derived from Greek and meaning not necessarily absence of order, as it is generally supposed, but an absence of rule. The anarchists are simply unterrified Jeffersonian Democrats. They believe that the best government is which governs least, and that which government which governs least is none at all. Even the simple police function of protecting person and protect and property they deny to governments, supported by compulsory taxes. Protection they look upon as a thing to be secured as long as it is necessary by voluntary association and cooperation for self-defense, or as a commodity be, to be purchased like any other commodity, of those who offer the best article at the lowest price. In their view, it is in itself an invasion of the individual to compel him, him to pay for or suffer a protection against invasion that he has not asked for and does not desire. And they further claim that protection will become a drug in the market, after poverty and consequently crime have disappeared through the realization of their economic program, compulsory taxation is to them the life principle of all the monopolies, and passive but organized resistance to the tax collector they, co they contemplate when their proper time comes as one of the most effective methods of accomplishing their purposes. Social Freedom their attitude on this is a key to their attitude on all of their questions of a political or social nature. In religion, they are atheistic as far as their own opinions are concerned, for they look upon the divine authority and the religious sanction of morality as the chief pretext put forward by the privileged classes for the excise of human authority. If God exists, said Perdon, he is man's enemy, and in contrast to Voltaire's famous epigram, if God did not exist, it would be necessary to invent him. The great Russian nihilist, Mikhail Bakunin, placed his antithetical proposition, if God existed, it would be necessary to abolish him. But although viewing the divine hierarchy as a contradiction of anarchy, they do not believe in it. The, the anarchist, nonetheless, firmly believes in the liberty to believe in it. Any denial of religious freedom they squarely oppose. Upholding th thus the right of every individual to be or select be his own priest, they likewise uphold his right to be or select to be his own doctor. No monopoly in theology, no monopoly in medicine. Competition everywhere and always, spiritual advice and medical advice alike, to stand or fall on their own merits. And not only in medicine, but in hygiene, must this principle of liberty be followed. The individual may decide for himself not only what to get well, but what to do to keep well. No external power must dictate to him what he must do, what he must eat, drink, wear, or do. Nor does the anarchistic scheme furnish any code of morals to be imposed upon the individual. Mind your own business is its only moral law. Interference with another's business is a crime, and the only crime, and as such may be properly resisted. In accordance with this view, the anarchists look upon attempts to arbitrarily suppress vice as in themselves crimes. They believe liberty and the resultant social well-being to be a, a sure cure for all the vices. But they recognize the right of the drunkard, the gambler, the rake, and the harlot to live their lives until they shall freely choose to abandon them. 
In the manner of maintenance and rearing of children, the anarchists would neither institute the communistic nursery which the state socialists favor, nor keep the communistic school system which now prevails. The nurse and the teacher, like the doctor and the preacher, must be selected voluntarily, and their services must be paid by those who patronize them. Parental rights must not be taken away, and parental responsibility must not be fostered upon others.